Hey guys, today we're going to talk a little bit about how your hat should fit. Um, I'm home, uh, they're doing some filming today at JJ Hat Center. Um, Netflix is doing a, a special with, uh, what's her name, Chloe Savin, you know, whatever her last name is, and uh, some other stars about Truman, Truman Capote, uh, it's called Capote Swans, I think. Anyway, um, so the, the shop is, is shut down. There's a couple of guys there, you know, manning the, the store with all the uh, the actors and crew and whatever. So I got to be home today and uh, teach you guys about uh, how your hat should fit and stuff. Now, the thing about it, hat sizing and fitting and all that stuff, it's very subjective. Every person likes their hat to fit a little differently. Um, not everybody likes the same fit. So as a salesman, I have to be almost receptive to um, the person's needs. It's hard to explain. They'll be asking me, you know, how does it, how, how does it fit? You know, and I'll say, well, how does it feel? And they, they'll ask me back, how should it feel? How should it, you know, they don't know. So the answer is not that simple. Sometimes a lot of the old men who come in like their hats very tight. Um, it's just a thing. It's a kind of a conservative thing or, you know, um, they wear hats a lot, I guess, and their hats blow away in the wind. So they just want them a little extra tight. Sometimes they get this little red line here from it being too tight, but they're okay with that. There are other people who like their hats super big, like me. Um, generally, a hat should not bottom out in your ear. It should not hit your ear where your ear should go like that you know it goes like an l what do i do do i put my ear in do i put my ear out and get it squished down that's a horrible look i don't know what to do basically the hat should be above the ear okay it can just touch it and graze it but there should generally be a little space a tiny little space somewhere like maybe between the the width of your eyeglass frame and maybe at most, maybe the width of your index finger or the width of your thumb, if you like your hat tight. Um, you shouldn't have that much space between your ear and your hat. It should be as small as possible, generally. A very small space. It can be just grazing, just touching your ear. Um, that's okay, but it shouldn't be obstructing your ear where the hat is so low that your ear is kind of making an L there or you don't know whether it should go out or in. Okay? There is a kind of a, uh, a hack, a fix for that. Like I like my hats extra, extra, extra big. I buy like, you know, size eights and double X's and stuff. Um, it's just my thing. What I do is I wear it at a slant like this. I put one ear in and one ear out and I just do a very extreme slant. That's just the way I wear my hats. And that diagonal thing is also it kind of makes your hat tighter on the diagonal because you're, you're taking up more room that way. So it just fits really well when I do that. It's an unusual way to wear a hat. Generally, the hat should not be that big. Um, but yeah, there are people who like it this big too. Super big. A lot of ladies like it extra big because it looks cuter that way. It always looks really cute when it's low like that. And hats tend to look goofier when they're high like that. It's just a thing, you know? So if you're in doubt, go big. Don't go small and expect it to stretch. Well, it's almost there, it'll stretch. No, it should feel perfect when you walk out of the store. Do not expect it to stretch. Um, caps, hats that don't have leather inside of it, they'll stretch easily. You could pull it over your knee, you could pull it over your chest, like a cap or something. There's nothing to it. There's no leather in there. A leather also has a reed. Okay, the reed is right here, that little tube. You know what I'm talking about. Excuse the sirens, I'm right by a hospital on Queens Boulevard. It's an ambulance passing. So anybody who knows me knows there's always sirens at, by Kevin's house on Queens Boulevard. Anyway, the reed has a piece of nylon fishing line in it. Why do they use nylon fishing line inside there? Well. The idea of the reed is to keep this oval shape. You want it to always be that nice shape. You don't want it to just be floppy, out of shape. You want it to 
stay oval like this, no matter what happens, how much you pull it, it always kind of bounces back into that oval. It's almost like a little springy, right? You ever notice that? It's like a spring effect. That's the nylon reed in there, okay? The idea of this, even if you bring your hat to a guy to stretch the hat a half size bigger, a whole size bigger, one and a half size bigger, two sizes bigger, three sizes bigger, all right? You're just messing up the felt and the outside of the hat because the hat is gonna shrink back to exactly the same size. Why? Because of that piece of fishing line, that piece of oval. The idea of it is to keep this oval shape, but also for it to snap back to the exact same shape and size every time. It's elastic, it's got that quality. You stretch and stretch and stretch, it doesn't break because it's elastic, it's just getting thinner, okay? It's like a rubber band stronger than a rubber band it's it's fishing line you know they put like 50 pound fish on those things and stuff you know it's thick like you know 50 pound test or 100 pound test line so it's very very strong it's almost like if a hat is too tight i always say it's like taking a ring of piano wire and trying to pull it over your skull that is not going to stretch no matter what you have a hat jack you think you're the best stretcher blah, blah, blah. i'm great at stretching i have a hat no, you're not stretching your hat, you're fooling yourself. All you do is you stretch it for the moment the hat jack is in there, as soon as you pull it out, it starts shrinking back. By the end of the day, you got the red line and your head hurts again. Don't deny it, you know it's true. Hat jacks don't work unless you cut the reed. There's a little reed back there, in there, in that tube, right there where it meets there. I cut it with a razor and I expose the fishing line that I take something and I pull the fishing line out a little, a little loop, okay? Then I clip it, I cut it, and then I pull it out. Sometimes they pull out easily, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're sewn in, um, usually not. Most of the time they come out easily. You don't have to remove the reed. I actually don't recommend removing it. What I recommend doing is just clipping it and basically cutting the tension. Break the circle of that piano wire. What happens is once you break that tension of the reed, now you can stretch your hat with a hat jack. Even you could stretch it over your knee. Pull it hard, hard over your chest like this. Not a jerking motion. You want to be careful, but firm, okay? You do that 20 times. Treat it like exercise. Do sets of 20 or whatever your hat will stretch better than any hat jack. You need to cut the reed before you get any, any results at all. If you think you're getting results, you're not. You're getting temporary results. The whole idea of the hat jack is to stretch a hat, but if there's a leather sweatband with a reed in there, it's futile, you will not do any stretching. Okay, let's get past that now. Buy your hats big because you can always stick a little something inside the back. Everybody here knows that. You put a little foam, you go to uh, Amazon or the hardware store, you get something called um, polyfoam uh, weather, weather seal. It's weather stripping, the stuff you put in the side of your windows and air conditioning and stuff. You get some polyfoam weather seal, maybe three eighths uh, of an inch width is good, anything like that, quarter inch, three eighths inch. Um, you get yourself six inches in six inches of it. You basically pull up your sweatband in the back behind your head and you put a strip either here on the leather or there below it. When you fold it down, it's going to the same space, so it doesn't matter. The longer the piece, the tighter the hat gets. Buy your hat big, fine tune it with the padding, okay? Don't buy it small, expect it to stretch. Okay, I always say this, we're gonna get past that now. How should your hat fit? Your hat should be close to the ear, okay? Here's my ear, there's the hat, it's close. It's like a pinky's width, that's normal. Okay, remember a lot of us do this and stuff, so in order to gauge it, it's gotta be straight, okay? All right. A lot of folks are tall, and this top part will interfere with, with your head. Basically, you bottom out, you hit that crease, and you don't get an accurate sizing. A lot of people out there don't even know the real size because of this problem. 
What you need to do to really gauge your size is pop this out. If you have a western hat, an open road, and it's hard to pop it out, just do it anyway. It's not bad for the hat. Pop it out, then put the hat back on, okay? Oh, now I see what's going on. I thought it fit because uh, it was going over there. But basically, this was stopping it from going any further. So when you, you pop that out, sometimes, it, oh, the hat's really big on me. And I didn't even know it was big. Or I didn't know it was tight on me because this little obstruction on top is keeping the hat way up here. It's kind of dangling and doing a weird thing. This is very common. A lot of times my colleagues come up to me and they're like, Kevin, what's going on with this hat? Is it too big? Is it too small? We can't tell. That's what it is. Depth issues. This is the reason why I always try hats on people. I don't use a tape measure because I like to see what the depth is, what's going on with the depth. I like to see what's going on uh, long oval. Do they have, you know, a long head rather than round, roundish, you know? Um, most of us have ovalish heads. Um, the long oval thing only matters with Western hats and hard, hard hats. Things like caps and softer fedoras, it doesn't matter, okay? Because they, they stretch, okay? What you do is you go a little bit big and you pat it, or you go a little bit, you know, if something's just tight a little there, you just give it a little pull if it's a soft hat. Um, but yeah, the, the long oval thing is irrelevant. It's only uh, pertinent for like, you know, if you're getting a Western hat or if you're having a custom made hat, maybe, you know, if they have long oval blocks, that's a good thing. But anyway, the hat should be close to your ear, okay? I'd say about as close as, super close. It could be really close, like to the point where it's almost touching it. Okay, it could be pretty far too. It could be the width of your pinky. It could be far, like, you know, up here, the width of your index finger, but not super, super big, big, big space there. That's a sign that your hat is tight, okay? Now, to double check if your hat actually is tight, pop this out, pop your crown out. Make sure you're not bottoming out on the crease. A lot of taller guys have problems with this because their head is tall. They're hitting the, the crown, they don't get an accurate reading. So pop it out like this, open your crown, do your test again, okay? See how it gauges next to your ear, okay? After you pop it out, you might get different readings, you might get the same readings. Try that out, pop the crown out and try your hat on again, especially if you're wearing something hard like an open road or a western, or something with a stiff crown on top. I wear very, very soft hats, if you notice. My hats are just mushy, mushy soft. That's just me. I like all my hats soft, and those are the kind of hats I buy. Um, I like them to feel almost like pajamas or something, just really soft. My green hats, um, you know, all of them, they're soft. I don't, and if I have any stiff hats, I don't wear them. Like that uh, black bolero on the wall, I never wear that thing. Um, it's stiff. I like soft hats because it also gives you a good fit. What happens is if you need more depth, your head just pushes it and makes that makes that bubble itself. But if your hat head is your hat is stiff on the roof, like a Western hat, uh, an open road, um, a McGill Brands. That's an idea, uh, an example of a hat with a stiff top. The, the Donovan, the Brands, they both have very stiff crowns. Hats like that, sometimes you gotta pop it out to gauge your size. Okay, pop out your crown and do it again just to see. You might surprise yourself. You might say, wait a minute, my hat needs an adjustment. I'm, I'm balancing on that little crease up there and my hat is actually big. Wow. You pop it out, you try it again. What you need to do is bubble out the crown so you have the proper amount of depth. So you, you need to push it out. I have a lot of videos on how to raise your crown. Just look it up, how to deepen my crown, how to... Uh, how to deepen a crown or my crown is too shallow. I have like 10 videos showing how to do that. Basically, if that happens, you're getting that false reading, you gotta make a little bubble up there so you have the depth you need. You won't see it. It's still gonna look like a center crease or whatever because it's, the, it's high. Nobody's able to look down on it, you know? But you make that little bubble up there so your, your hat can go all the way down to where it needs to be, okay, without that thing popping up, all right? You bubble it out, and then you adjust the head. If it needs to be tightened, you adjust it with some foam or whatever. You take some foam out, 
Sometimes uh, you get these false readings. So anyway, how should your hat fit? It should fit tight enough that you can lock it down at your brow bone, okay? Your brow bone is the biggest part of your skull if you're looking at a uh, profile. You know, the biggest part of your head up here is the brow bone, okay? From there it gets smaller. So you're gonna wear your hat naturally above the brow bone, right up there, okay? You're hanging out, it's above the... Now, if a wind comes, the subway's gonna pass you, you know your hat might blow off. You have to be able to pull this down to your brow bone where it locks on tighter. Right there, it should it should be tight. So if you tie your shoes like this, you turn your head upside down, it doesn't fall. See that? It's on my eyebrows. I could even move it, okay? But that's a good fit. A good fit means it's above the eyebrow bone there. It feels right to you. It feels snug, comfortable. But you still have the ability, when it's windy, to lock it down at the tightest part of your head, the brow bone. You'll pull it down extra tight, extra low, which you'll never wear it down there, but at least you can secure it for the wind. Oh, the wind is coming. I'm fine. I don't have to hold my hat. I'm good, you know? Okay, wind is gone. That's a good fit. You gotta lock it. Now, if your hat is so big that when you go to the brow bone, it's still like all loose, you know your hat needs to be tightened, okay? That's how you check. It will go above the brow bone, it'll fit you nicely the way you like it. Tight, you can almost adjust it, you can loosen it a little, you can tighten it a little, right? That's a good fit. And then when a wind comes, you can lock it down at the brow bone. You might be able to just barely do it, but you can do it. This hat's not going anywhere, you know? It is locked down. I can tie my shoes, it's not gonna fall. I'm pulling it now, yeah, it's really secure. That's a good fit. You can check the sides. You can check this brow bone test that I just told you about. Be able to lock it down. Nice, up there, you know. Um, and you should also check, pop out your crown and check it on open crown to see how it fits around the temple, okay? That's one fit. This is another fit. Depth is another fit. A lot of people don't realize it. There's really three fits. There's length this way. Do you need more length? Are you hitting the front? You're getting bumps there. There's depth, which is like, okay, it's the hat's not going down if I'm hitting the roof. What's going on here? I need it to go down here. That's depth. And then there's regular size fit, which is like around here, around the circle is just too tight or too loose. Okay? So three kinds of fit, huh? Who's the best? This guy right here, huh? No, but uh, humbly speaking, it's a um, it's an important thing. When you when you get your, your head uh, measured or you're checking yourself, check the depth out too. This is like 50% of the people who try on hats and stuff have this depth issue and they don't even know it. Um, I see it all the time, I look at people, I can tell that there's an issue, but you know, sometimes I mention it, other times I don't, but um, Telecaster!
now, folks, it's time to say good night. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night. <laughs>